lot of people have asked me, so how do you best prepare for the loop? And uh, to be honest, most of my boating experience is either uh, on the Missouri River, uh, the upper Mississippi. Uh, I've, I've done that um, as well. But I really haven't been on most of the loop. So I had a lot of research to do with regard to the rest of the rivers and the intracoastal waterway and just really wanted to familiarize myself with the route. Um, the running joke as far as the best way to prepare yourself for the loop is to um, get yourself a couple of layers of maybe some baggy clothes. You, you jump in the shower, you turn the cold water on and stand under the shower under the cold water ripping up $20 bills. <laughs> and uh, that's probably not too far off. And if, if you got a bigger boat, they're probably $100 bills. But um, all jokes aside, I, I had a lot of prep that I had to do uh, to, to really familiarize myself with the route. And I'm going to share some tools and a spreadsheet that I built to help me better understand the trip. So I'll open up my uh, first screen here I'll show you is the, um, this is Waterway Guide. Uh, it's a website. Uh, you can become a member, et cetera, log in. Um, but they have an amazing amount of information on this website. And I use this to basically really just go through the entire route um, as if I was on the ski. And I scraped quite a bit of information as I went through it. It's pretty cool. You're able to, I'm just going to drill in here to uh, Millville, uh, Millville Bay. And as you drill in, um, the level of detail changes and it takes you all the way into the navigation charts as you continue to drill. Um, and so these are all the navigational aids that are out there in the water um, and marks the channels, uh, the depth. Um, and so you can see here where Mobile Bay is, is pretty shallow um, all in all. Uh, it's, it's not too deep. So you really got to kind of pay attention and stay in, stay in the channels, et cetera. But beyond kind of showing you where the channel is and, and where everything's at, you can also drill into the marinas and um, other and the bridges and all of the things that you really need to know about as far as the trip. And so this is just an example of a couple of marinas here uh, in Mobile Bay. Um, and so as you kind of drill in further, you can click and highlight and it tells you their name, the phone number, what marine channel, uh, if you got your marine VHF radio. Uh, and there's even reviews for some folks that have left reviews. So really it's a, it was a great tool, great way for me to familiarize myself with the entire trip. So between with that, what I did is I put together a spreadsheet and I'm, I'm a geek, I'll admit it, uh, but uh, put this together. So every, every river, every waterway, kind of like a, a, a highway, it has mile markers. Um, and so when I put in, in the Missouri River uh, here in Omaha, it's mile marker 601. And so it's 601 miles all the way down to the where the Missouri meets the Mississippi. And so between all the mile markers, I was able to determine, okay, so how many miles from the start of the trip total am I working on? So each section has its own section miles and then the total trip miles. And so I was able to kind of understand, okay, well, roughly how far should I go or how far can I get? Now, golden rule of loopers is to not set a schedule, right? Uh, you, you let the weather help plan your trip um, and not to force yourself out into a bad situation where there's lightning or heavy winds or large waves, uh, you know, once you're in the open waters. So this is not a schedule. It's, it's really just a tool to help me um, try to understand the impact of a change based on this initial stab of what might happen. So here I'm saying I'm gonna spend one night 
uh, somewhere north of Leavenworth, Kansas. Just go find a beach. I'll be tent camping that first night. And roughly around mile marker 430, somewhere in there. And that means I will have traveled 171 miles that first day, uh, trying to get as many miles on the Missouri River as I can in the, the first few days here. And, uh, and then my first uh, stop uh, for fuel will be at the Leavenworth uh, boat dock. I'm gonna have somebody meet me there uh, with some red cans and help refuel my, my ski and my the other red cans that I have on the ski with me. And so by marking which, which days or which areas are stops for the night versus which places are stops for fuel, I'm able to see that, oh, okay, I've got 223 miles of range needed uh, between when I start or the last fuel stop and this fuel stop. So here you can see I've got an X here. So yep, 208 miles uh, between these two fuel stops. And if I change it, if I you know throw the X somewhere else, then it will recompute automatically and say, okay, yep, you got 52 between those two and it auto adjusts everything. So as it, I, this was very helpful for me to plan the trip uh, and understand what's my max range needed and, and about where should I be stopping uh, if things, you know, go this way. And, and again, I'm letting, need to let weather dictate things. Some days I'll be able to ski longer. Some days, you know, an unexpected storm will pop up and I'll have to stop early for the day. Uh, but it's just a great, great tool to help me understand the impact of where I need to be or where I will be later in the trip. So I do plan to work on the trip uh, um, uh, roughly one to two days a week, uh, de depending on the week. There's, you know, some holiday weeks, etc. So some here I've got how many nights I plan to stay. So once I get down to the St. Louis area at the Alton Marina, I plan to spend two nights in that area. And so therefore it knows, uh, but let's just say another storm came up and I had to stay a third night. Well, the whole spreadsheet understands what the impact is to that. And it, it, you know, all the way down for the entire route, it will tell me what the impact of uh, staying that extra day or maybe even getting an extra day on the water, uh, what that would mean. So each river, each body of water is, is sectioned out with its mile markers. And if I just kind of go on to, oh, this red on port, it's just a navigational reminder as you're going either with the current or uh, against the current, um, or if you're returning from to home, if you will, uh, which side should the red and green um, buoys in the water uh, and reflectors that are on land, which side should that be? Should I be looking for that on? Pretty straightforward in most places, but when you start getting into some uh, other bodies of water, it, it is not so straightforward in some cases. So this Mississippi, Ohio, uh, the Cumberland River, uh, the Tennessee River, et cetera, all of them with their mile markers. And I've built in into my loose, loose schedule or first attempt, uh, you know, extra days so that, and who knows when those extra days will happen, uh, but it's just a way for me to gauge uh, roughly how long it's going to take. So uh, along with that, all of these red items are the locks and dams. So with each lock and dam, I have uh, the uh, phone number uh, listed for it um, and the marine channel uh, in order for me to contact them. I'll have a, and I'll go over all my equipment, but I will have a handheld VHF radio in order to communicate with other boats, as well as to communicate with the uh, lock masters. So all of that information I've pulled in and the other piece of information that I pulled in is also the uh, bridges. So being a jet ski, I really don't have to worry about too many bridges uh, and being able to clear them, even when like um, uh, if they're draw bridges and they're, they're down and you know, we'll, we'll be able to ski under most of them. Uh, but there are a few that gets close. And so I've just 
highlighted them here. If nothing else, it's a landmarker, you know, just a way for me to see progress that I'm making. Uh, but uh, I do plan to have my flagpole and that will be sticking up out of the water uh, a good six feet, maybe even eight feet. So just a reminder for me to, you might want to lower that uh, pole down <laughs> at some of these bridges. Um, the, the blues are the uh, sea dew dealers that I plan to stop and um, do maintenance on the ski. So it's roughly about every hundred hours I'll need to have an oil change done and, um, and uh, you know, they'll be able to look over the, the ski for any kind of wear and tear and warranty items, etc. Um, so that's nice and it makes its way all the way down. You see on the Erie Canal, there's a lot of locks and dams. Um, and so this was great. I've even got some hotel sites um, as I get into the marinas. It's like, okay, uh, there's some bed and breakfast options. I'll, I'll just do the research on the fly once I get to the marina, if I stop there. Uh, and also, you know, just some specific spots that I've researched out ahead of time. So all just a great way for me to one spreadsheet, one place to go to for a whole bunch of information so that I'm not trying to scramble and look things up uh, last minute. Uh, pretty cool tool. I thought you would enjoy that. That helped me mentally prepare both, you know, four months ago, five months ago, as I was trying to put all of this information together and get myself comfortable with the trip, but also heavily used while I'm on the trip. Uh, I'll have it on my tablet and my phone, be able to pull up the information on the fly. All right, we'll see you guys.